So I want to talk a little bit more about the transmission through a well. Now this is probably going to stretch my, my drawing ability past what I can actually do. But let's think a little bit about qualitatively and quantitatively what's happening with transmission. So you're given this equation for the transmission coefficient. And there's also then a reflection coefficient. When you add them together, they get one. Because your wave has to be transmitted or reflected. Those, those are the options. And so it's written this way, where f then is representing that coefficient, and a is your incoming coefficient. So this is a way of getting away from the fact that we can't really normalize it fully. So k1 and k2 were related to the energies. So your energy here, k1, not literally, but under the square root with all the other nonsense, and then k2. So notice that when you have this sort of a term, the sine of k2, k2a, that is assuming that you have this sort of a, a, a width, that the width is going to be 2a. So if your coordinate system is different, make sure you adjust accordingly. So now there's something to, interesting to notice, that for certain values of 2, k2a, this term becomes 0. And if this term is 0, this doesn't matter what that is. And so then you get 1 over 1. So the good news is it isn't that this is floating by itself. Remember that. So it's OK that this term becomes 0 because you then have 1 over 1. So that there are some special values of 2 k2a for which the transmission coefficient is 1. So t equals 1 if sine of 2 k2a equals 0, which is going to be a familiar looking constraint of 2 k2a equals n pi. Hmm. That is, that is awfully familiar. So what does this mean? And this is where I'm probably not going to be able to draw this very well. So we have our incoming wave. And I'm going to try to draw a symmetry mark. And we have this incoming wave. And then it gets here, right? And now it's going to change its wavelength. And in this case, the wavelength is going to get shorter, which I think I've done a bad job of drawing. And the amplitude would need to actually get smaller. So OK, so now it's shorter, shorter. And, and now here's, here's the thing. If you have, and then we go back to being longer. Um, eh. I've done a bad job drawing it. So here, wavelength has, in fact, uh, decreased. It's gotten shorter. And amplitude has also decreased in this region. But if you have an integer number of basically wavelengths, right? That's effectively what's happening here. Then what that means is there's a relationship between the point here and the point here such that they're equal in magnitude. Here I've drawn it as a way that we, f we flip the sign, but they're equal in magnitude. So what that means is if this was at, uh, we'll call it, I don't want to reuse a letter. There's too many letters. Um, let's call this Q, capital Q, that this is also at capital Q. And you could imagine scenarios where it keeps the same sign. So effectively, it's like the well wasn't there, that what came in the, is also the same thing going out, that we haven't changed anything. So that's this special scenario where 100% of your wave is transmitted. Nothing is reflected. So I hope that that makes a little bit of sense. Um, again, there's just it's interesting to note that there are these special conditions. The book goes through the idea of making this analogous to some optic scenarios, such as where you get um, total reflection where you see colors. There are optics phenomena similar to this and it really has to do with integer numbers of wavelengths whenever you have this change of potential.